Hi everyone, it's Katrina. Number 10. The Lost City of Kayona There is an ancient city from the antediluvian days, before the biblical flood, supposedly hiding somewhere in Antarctica. The remains of this lost city have not officially been found, though self-proclaimed researchers still say it exists. The city is called Kayona, and it was allegedly established in Antarctica tens of thousands of years ago by our own ancestral aliens. Visitors from another planet came to Antarctica, built the city, and used it as their base as they seeded life on Earth. But the story goes, about 13,000 years ago when dramatic changes on the planet caused the poles to freeze, Kayona was trapped underneath the ice. Some say it's still down there, somewhere under the surface of Antarctica, waiting to be revealed. Some even say the Nazis knew about the lost city of Kayona, which was why they were so desperate to establish a base of operations in Antarctica. But as far as the history records show, the Nazis never found anything. To this day, we don't know if there is an ancient alien city hidden beneath the frozen continent. Most of the evidence we have comes from satellite images of strange formations that may or may not be prehistoric ruins. Do you think there is a lost city in Antarctica? Let me know your thoughts in the comments and be sure to subscribe! Number 9. Antarctic Chasm In early 2023, a giant chasm was found causing problems in Antarctica. The huge chasm is like the Antarctic version of the Grand Canyon, except much colder. It was found on Antarctica's Brunt Ice Shelf, and it created an iceberg so big it could be legendary. The chasm on the ice shelf has been getting bigger for quite some time. A few years ago, it became obvious to researchers that it was only going to become more problematic, and so British scientists had to move the Halley Research Station before it fell into the widening gulf. And now the chasm has reached its pinnacle, splitting the ice in half to give birth to an iceberg over 20 miles across. According to the British Antarctic Survey, it happened at approximately 2 p.m. on Sunday, January 22nd. An exceptionally high tide came in, pushed water over the ice and into the chasm, and the whole thing reached its breaking point. The ice shelf, which is 490 feet thick, was cracked completely in half. That's how thick the ice still is here in Antarctica, almost 500 feet. The iceberg created from the chasm is larger than Los Angeles at a whopping 600 square miles. That iceberg is now going to drift away into the Weddell Sea and eventually melt. And now for number 8. But first, I want to give a big shout out to Wayne Hersel and Robert Brown. Thanks so much for watching and supporting this channel. If you are new here, be sure to subscribe and join the family. Number 8 giant monster birds. In the 1980s, scientists recovered fossils from Antarctica that represent the oldest giant extinct group of birds from the southern oceans. These horrendous birds were straight from a prehistoric nightmare with wingspans of nearly 21 feet. To put that in perspective, the longest wingspan of any living bird is 11 and a half feet. That award goes to the wandering albatross, the truly majestic animal. But 60 million years ago, the wandering albatross would have looked like a hummingbird compared to these much more ferocious creatures that ruled the southern hemisphere. The birds are called pelagornithids, and they were some of the first major predators to rebound after the extinction event that killed the dinosaurs. The asteroid hit the Earth 66 million years ago, and the pelagornithids had already taken control of the southern skies by 62 million years ago. One of the more recent discoveries in Antarctica was the fossilized foot of a gigantic bird from 50 million years ago. Researchers also found part of a jawbone from 40 million years ago. Both of the birds boasted impressive wingspans of 20 feet. Peter Kloss from the University of California says these fossils show just how quickly the birds evolved. In a very short time span, they were suddenly enormous. They had exceptional wings, most likely no predators, and free reign of all the seafood in Antarctica. But like every other animal that's ever evolved, the giant birds of Antarctica went extinct two and a half million years ago as the Earth began to cool and the Ice Age crept in. The Pelagornithid slowly vanished. Number 7. Antenna at the Bottom of the Sea 
In 1962, the United States National Science Foundation completed construction on the USNS Eltonin. The vessel was designed to be as technologically advanced as the 1960s would allow, a sophisticated oceanographic research ship. It was the very first geophysical ship made, specifically to investigate Antarctica and the water surrounding its icy shores. In the early 1960s, the ship collected a significant amount of information. Researchers on board the vessel learned a lot about Antarctica, the creatures living in its waters, and the grueling temperatures at the bottom of the world. And then something strange happened. On August 29, 1964, the Altonen was photographing the floor of the ocean near Cape Horn. This was the 1960s, so keep in mind the photographs were in the best of quality. At a depth of nearly three miles, they were only able to take blurry, grainy photos. But during their exploration, they photographed what appeared to be an antenna sticking up at the bottom of the ocean. It looked artificial, as if it had been planted there by some intelligent life form. The structure stood two feet tall, was perfectly symmetrical, and had four groupings of nodes and spokes on it. It looked like any antenna you might find sticking out from somebody's roof or from an FBI surveillance van. On December 5, 1964, the photographs were published in the New Zealand Herald. The article said the mysterious photo was taken at 2,250 fathoms, but no explanation was ever given as to its origin. To this day, we still don't have an explanation for what the strange antenna was at the bottom of the sea. What do you think it was? Where do you think it came from? Number 6. The Ruins of Atlantis According to some recently revealed satellite images, the ruins of Atlantis may have just been found in Antarctica. We've already heard about the mysterious city of Kayona, allegedly built by aliens when they began experimenting with humans. But there are a lot more self-proclaimed experts interested in the lost civilization of Atlantis. The latter seems a little more grounded in reality. Graham Maple, the man who found the images on Google Earth and uploaded them online, says he came across an ancient structure. The structure appears to be carved into the rock of Antarctica itself and looks like the remains of what was once a large building. There is no physical evidence at this point that the ruins of Atlantis have been found in Antarctica. The anomalies picked up on the satellite images are pretty convincing, though. The biggest issue skeptics have is that Antarctica is very far from where Plato originally described the city as being. Atlantis should be somewhere near Europe, not at the bottom of the world. But if the ruins are real and they don't belong to the city of Atlantis, what civilization left them there? Number 5. The Doomsday Glacier Scientists studying one of the most important glaciers in the world have just discovered something terrifying. Researchers with the International Thwaites Glacier Collaboration Team recently inserted cameras through boreholes in the Thwaites Glacier. They wanted to see what was happening to it underwater. The images revealed that although the glacier is melting slower than some predicted, water underneath the Antarctic ice is creating cracks in certain places, causing the ice to melt exceedingly faster than expected. The glacier has been nicknamed the Doomsday Glacier by scientists across the globe. The thing about this particular chunk of ice is that it has the potential to raise sea levels by 10 feet. It's about the size of Florida and has already accounted for about 4% of the global sea level rise. If this glacier collapses, it is going to add a lot more water to your local coastline. Brittany Schmidt, an associate professor at Cornell University, says the data collected from this most recent study shows exactly what is happening. The collapse of the glacier can happen a lot easier than anyone anticipated. Even though it appears to be melting slowly, it can pick up speed. Once all the ice is gone, the world could be plunged into a doomsday scenario. Can't wait. Number 4. The Singing Ice One of the largest pieces of ice in the world is currently singing. Scientists say that as wind gusts over the rough surface of the Ross Ice Shelf, the massive expanse of frozen water and dirt emits a continuous shrieking sound as if it's singing. Although depending on your interpretation of singing, it may also sound like the ice shelf is screaming. You can't physically hear the noise just by standing on the ice. The tones are too low to be picked up in the human ear. 
but when captured with special sound equipment, the noise is extremely remarkable. Some have compared it to the haunting sounds of a didgeridoo. Others say it sounds like the ominous soundtrack to a space alien movie from the 1950s. The Ross Ice Shelf can be found floating right next to the continent of Antarctica in the Southern Oceans. In 2014, researchers buried dozens of seismic sensors under its surface. They hadn't done this with the intent of finding strange sounds, but were simply trying to understand more about the ice shelf. After two years of collecting data, they realized the surface of the ice shelf is always vibrating. It is in a constant state of vibration, with those vibrations giving off a frequency that sounds like singing. Douglas McHale, an expert in glaciers from the University of Chicago, says the vibrations are caused by nothing more than the wind. But the sound it makes is scary. Douglas compared it to the buzzing of a thousand bugs in the summertime. What do you think? Let me know in the comments. Number 3. Mystifying Holes in the Ice In the 1970s, a giant hole opened in Antarctica and terrified scientists. Nobody had any idea why such a huge pit would form in the middle of the Antarctic sea ice. But then the chasm went away, and it didn't happen again until recently. And now it's a problem. Scientists have discovered huge holes in the ice they call the polynias. Most of these mysterious holes are found in the Southern Ocean or along the coast of Antarctica. They are temporary zones suddenly devoid of ice, almost like oases in a desert. Surrounded on all sides by frozen ice, the holes become playgrounds for penguins, seals, and other forms of wildlife. For decades, scientists have struggled to come up with an answer for what creates the Antarctic holes. But then, a few years ago, Atmospheric scientist Diana Francis came up with a theory. She realized that when a massive polynia opened in 2017, it happened as an atmospheric river across the Weddell Sea. An atmospheric river is a collection of moisture in the atmosphere, almost like a real river moving through the sky. Atmospheric rivers can be thousands of miles long, with more water vapor than the Amazon River has liquid water. When one of these atmospheric rivers moves across Antarctica, it sometimes releases enough warm snow to melt a crater in the ice. This forms a mysterious penguin oasis. Number 2. The Castle in Antarctica In 2012, the GOI-1 satellite photographed what might be the ruins of a castle in Antarctica. The image taken by the satellite appears to show an oval-shaped ruin in the ice that looks shockingly similar to the ruins of castles throughout Europe. The structure looks like it could have once been a fortress made of solid stone and timber. All that's left of it now are its foundations. Just by looking at the shape of it, you can tell it was put together with purpose. It doesn't look like a natural formation you would expect to find in Antarctica. It really does look like somebody made it. Then again, it might just be a trick. The truth is that Antarctica has been almost entirely covered in ice for 34 million years. If Atlantis was a real city 12,000 years ago, Antarctica would not have been an ideal place for it. The ruins of the alleged castle, unless built by an ice-dwelling civilization we've never heard of before, might just be the result of melting ice and howling winds. It could be a sastruki, something formed by wind erosion. As wind blows across the ice, some snow melts, some salt from the sea gets pushed into clumps, and seemingly artificial forms are created. The ruins of the castle could just be the result of blowing wind. What do you think it is? Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Number 1. Rare Meteorite A collection of five rare meteorites were just found by a team of international researchers in Antarctica. One of the meteorites was positively huge one of the largest ever found on the continent. The seemingly ordinary black rock is the size of a cantaloupe, yet it weighs 17 pounds. Researchers say that's because of its extreme mineral density. Even though the meteorite is only the size of a huge, plump fruit, it has so many minerals that it weighs more than your average bowling ball. Scientist Maria Valdez from the University of Chicago says the discovery is both rare and exciting. As you may have guessed, this isn't the first time people have gone meteorite hunting in Antarctica. 
Over 45,000 space rocks have been collected from the pale surface of the continent over the last 100 years. Because of the endless expanse of pure white snow and ice, scanning for meteorites is as simple as looking for a black chunk of debris in the snow. But what in the world are scientists going to do with all these space rocks? Maria told CNN that her focus and specialty is cosmochemistry. She will be taking the giant meteorite back to her lab and then dissolving it in acids so that she can isolate its elements. She wants to pick it apart and see exactly what pieces of space material it's made out of. Scientists are hoping to understand the origin of rock itself and even identify from which part of the universe it came from. Thanks for watching! What's your favorite discovery from Antarctica? Let me know in the comments below! Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already and come back soon! Bye!